Welcome back. With cattle prices and input costs where they are, producers are looking for every opportunity to make full use of all the resources that can help feed and care for their cattle. One practice that's catching on in some areas is baling corn stalks to add to the cattle forage and bedding resources available to producers. We learn more as Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter checks in from Corn Country in Iowa. No doubt Northeast Iowa is corn country and cattle country too. And for Gary Hermson, his corn, cattle, and custom baling work keep him on the go every day. As far as uh, custom baling, um, I'll do anywhere from uh, oh, 1,500 to 2,500 bales custom work a year. And then uh, on any given day, just like recently I had, uh, was baling corn stalks in the afternoon. Uh, and then I switched over to waterway hay and then I did some fifth cutting baleage for a guy you know, all in the same day and it worked out very well. In much of Iowa, the trend has been toward maximizing resources and following up the corn harvest by baling the corn stalks. Corn stalk bales in Iowa traditionally have been used as a bedding source and not only for cattle producers but all kinds of producers. It's a great bedding source. Um, it's a really good uh, bedding source from a sustainability standpoint or a systems approach because we're removing the stalks from the cornfield, bringing that manure right back and so we're basically recycling those nutrients. But in the last, I'll say, decade or so, we've really started to look at cornstalk bales as a feed source. In the uh, last three, four years, we've seen people add it into beef rations, in the total mixed rations, as we were running short of hay in the last two years. Then hay prices went way up. People had a ready source for corn fodder, so they would bale the, the corn stalks to make sure they could add it in with other energy sources, and it became a great source of fiber for the cattle. What I see as some of the key benefits of using corn stalks in a ration is, number one, it's cheap. And with feed being at least 60% or more of our cost of production, anything we can do to, to, to cheapen up our ration is really important and really critical. So I see that as being a huge plus. Whether used as a feed resource or for bedding, corn stalks do have real value for cattle producers. But as you might expect, there are some best practices to consider when making the move to bale corn stalks. When producers are looking at baling at corn stalks, a couple of things I look for first, or I think you need to think about, is what's the intended use? Because that's gonna make a big difference in what kind of bales or what type of bales you're gonna look at. For those guys that are looking at using corn stalk bales in a cow ration, I'd probably like to prefer to have most of it be leaves and husk, because that's where our nutrient value is, versus a lot of stems. So if there's some ways we can look at picking up fewer stems and more of the leaf and husk, that's probably more ideal. In a feedlot ration, probably not as critical because it's serving the purpose of fiber only. So maybe not as critical there. And then of course bedding sources, we really want to pick up as much product as we can. The best way to prepare corn stalks for baling, especially with new varieties that have stay green gene in them, where the stalk is a lot greener and the ear is ready for harvest, is to take and either do flail shredding or rotary shredding of the stalks, let them dry whatever you have for time, three, five, seven days, something like that. Then come back either with a wheel rake, which is the most popular, or a parallel bar rake will work just as well. Rake windrows that are actually full width of your pickup. Um, that way that you can drive straight down the windrow. You don't have to weave back and forth. There's less risk of you making an odd shaped bale if you actually make a nice square windrow like that that you can follow straight through. There are several factors that influence the quality of cornstalk bales, including crop dry down, bale density, and windrow quality. Windrow quality is really uh, imperative with cornstalks to keep them feeding in optimally. If you want to make the maximum amount of money doing custom work for folks, you need that material to flow well. You need a nice product that's square over the top and square over the edges. Nobody likes to look at bales that are dipped in the center. They don't store as well because you get more water ingress in that area. So having a nice square-edged, flat-topped windrow is the best thing you can do for bale storage life as well as getting the most out of your baler and tractor in a day. I think the other thing that's really critical is that we make sure we're making dry bales. So to make sure that that product has had time to dry down um, so that we can store it well and get the most longevity out of it. 
As far as like the density, what I really noticed on the New Holland bales, uh, as far as what my customers really like, is the fact that you know you get a, such a compact bale, whether it's five foot bale or six foot bale, it doesn't allow water in, and plus the bales hold their shape better and they store better, which makes it you know you have more dry matter when they go to use them. That's probably the biggest key right there. Bale density is one key to weather resistance and storing the cornstalk bale up off the ground is also key to maintaining quality over time. Probably what producers would say is the biggest problem when stock bales get wet is the ability to pick them up and use them. They tend to want to fall apart on us. I think probably the bigger effect is the loss of feed quality, the potential mold growth that comes with it. And if you're thinking about using it from a bedding standpoint, the whole purpose of bedding is to soak up moisture. If it's already wicked up a lot of moisture, we then lose a lot of our bedding effect. For Gary Hermson, the value of cornstalk bales is clear. And when it's time to bale, for him, there's one choice when it comes to equipment and customer service. My New Holland equipment I've got right now, I've got a T.7235 with the CVT and I absolutely love that on front of the 560 specialty crop baler I've got, which has been a very good baler for me. My Dell Clay uh, dealership that I bought this baler from has been very good. They've, uh, they're local. Um, I like to support local when I can. And as far as, you know, if I got any questions, Jay's been more than happy to answer them for me or have somebody contact me that knows what to do and uh, they have good parts up there and that's probably been the key for it. I think that Del Clay's uniqueness with New Holland comes in the fact the way we're able to work with our area sales representative, our service representatives to try and keep them in uptime. Uptime is important to every farmer, every operator, every business needs uptime. As far as like the New Holland Advantage, it's a much heavier baler, and not in the terms of just raw weight, but it's how they're designed. It's designed to make a better bale because of the roll belt system. I think that's probably the key I've noticed versus just a belt baler. That's what I really like about this baler. In Northeast Iowa, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about New Holland balers, you can visit their website that's newholland.com.